Welcome to Hack the File, I'm Michael Lopez. And today we're gonna start a new series on the book, Getting Started, Becoming a Master Hacker. Enjoy. All right, Getting Started, Becoming a Master Hacker. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go through this book and this book is for people that are wanting to become a hacker um, and do some labs and practice because this actually has you set up a lab and we're going to do that in this video right I already have a virtual machine VMware I think this uses um, virtual box so I have a virtual box too but virtual box sucks um, I like VMware better so I'm probably just going to use VMware, right? I'm not going to do VirtualBox. But if you want to, I'll, we'll go through that and then it'll, you, you can set up the environment yourself. If you buy this book, then you can use this book in conjunction with my videos and then you, we can learn together. And if you get stuck, I can help you through it, right? But if you're just watching this and you're following along and you're trying to, you know, do it two and that's fine too right so let's let's go ahead and start this so um a little background on this or what my idea for these videos are is it's going to give you a taste and it's going to give you um an idea where to start right because you want to become a hacker you know where are you going to start right it's basically man, let me fix my camera um is basic where are you gonna start right it's basically where um what this video is and a lot of people are like well i don't know how to start i don't know what to do so this is where you start i would say and regardless of your background um this is a good book to start with because it's gonna start from reconnaissance right and when you're hacking or whatever you're attacking something even in the military or anything you're going to send scouts out to get information on your enemy then you're going to set up the defense or an attack based on that and this starts with um with reconnaissance first so it's a great book um so let's start off so we're going to do getting started and i don't know why this is black i mean this these kindle things are just glitchy okay that's you or me hacking I don't know why he's got a sweater on must be cold in this room <laughs> um, so I don't know what that page is blank for it's just glitchy it's just really annoying me um, and what I like about this book is he puts a lot of quotes in here that, that are inspiring you know so introduction to a master hacker the journey of a thousand miles begin with the first step. And that's Lao Tzu, right? <clears throat> so we're gonna skip all this. He had a wonderful time writing it. Ah, that's nice, yeah. This goes through professions of a hacker, so read this part if you buy this book. All this stuff is important, but I already know it, and if you're intermediate, then you already know this. If you're a beginner and enthusiast, then pick up this book if you're really an enthusiast. If you ain't got the money, pause this and read what you can read right but I'll just basically give you an overview of it uh, this is all just basically showing you the sectors and the different sectors of of, um, of um, hacking now this book primarily focuses on hacking the hacking side right hence the name of the book so um, but it's telling you know you got military sector that does it and it's using an example or whatever when it was started I don't know Penetration testing or a pen tester tells you what they do. Bug bounty hunting is when you get paid by companies to hack their stuff. That's what I'm going to do here. Um, I plan on doing that soon. So I'm going to I have a bug bounty book that I'm going to go through on my own. I might not even record it. And then when I'm done, I'm going to maybe um, go through the book and show you how to become a bug bounty, bug bounty hacker. But, you know, you only got so much time, and we'll see. Um, this actually tells you it's pretty cool, right? I'm, I'm Hispanic, so um, 
I guess many of the largest organizations in the United States offer bug bounties, including Microsoft, Google, whatever, whatever, right? In 2019, it was announced that an Argentinian teenager, Santiago Lopez, well, same thing, I'm Lopez too, was the first bug bounty hunter to earn a million dollars. So, um, he's one of the top bug bounty hunters, right? And he's Hispanic, so I like that. From Argentina. Anyways, okay, so zero day developers are people that are developing, uh, and it tells you what they are right here um, uh, viruses or malware that nobody's ever seen before, basically, is what that is. InfoSec security engineers, okay, Linux skills to begin. Okay, so this is talking about you have to have some Linux skills, and you do. And um, the best way to get Linux skills is to do to practice on Linux, is to get a Linux machine and do a lot of Linux command line. That's it. Practice, man. That's it. You know, get a Linux. Well, this is going to help you give, get some Linux skills. This book. Okay, so a word about black hat versus white hat. Okay, so I'm not going to read all this because. I'm just going to go through, a, if you guys are intermediate level, you already know, whatever, okay, you know the spiel. But I'm going to go a little bit into the white hat versus black hat. So black hat is basically um, bad actors, right? The ones that are hacking into your system and, and illegally, right? Taking your stuff and, you know, doing God knows what. Um, ransomware and all that stuff. And... White hat is basically when you have permission to. It's not illegal. Ethical hacker, right? Then you have gray hat. It's somewhere in the between. You know, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of like to look at it like, um, you know, heroes, anti-heroes, and and villains, right? In the Marvel universe, right? Anti-heroes gonna be like Wolverine. Wolverine kills bad guys. That's about gray hat hacker. <laughs> it's gonna do, you know, in the gray line. I mean, a white hat is, you know, like Superman or Batman. He never kills nobody, right? And, and you know, the bad guys, he never kills them. He never kills the Joker and all that stuff. Where's my mouse? Okay. Okay, before you begin this journey, let's look at the history of hacking. Okay, we're not going to look at the history of hacking, even though that's a great picture of Steve Jobs. Um... <laughs> I'm not going to go through the history of hacking. It doesn't really matter. You want that information, read it, Google it. Famous people who were hackers, um, read it if you want to know it. I don't really care. Um, now, this is going through a lot of famous people, famous hackers, and it's going to have Kevin Mitnick in here and everything. I don't know why that picture is there, but we're going to, and then now it's going through like, um, uh, the most infamous hacks, right? According to this book and the Morris worm of 1988, Melissa virus of 1999. The one that I want to read right here is eternal blue. Okay. So we're going to skip that, but we're gonna actually going to read eternal blue. Now this is talking about organizations like Anonymous, and read that too. Um, these are your people that you're that you're going to be defending against, or you're going to possibly join. I I don't know what. <laughs> so well, you most likely, hopefully, defending against, right? You know, you want to bring more chaos into the world. But uh, they're a very interesting group, Anonymous. I'm sure everybody's heard of them. Um, you know, TJX, 2007, Carter Market, Max Butler. These are, uh, um, Nation of Georgia, Conflictor Worm, Operation Aurora. These are all incidents that I think that they did. And this shows you how it happened, what they did. And if you're not a technical guy, you're not going to know what that is, but you can guess by looking. Um, Stutnex. Stutnex is a, is a good one. The PlayStation Network was attacked. I remember when this was attacked. So if you want to read some information on that, you can read it. And the actors involved. Great book. This is all a great read, but we're not we're gonna skip all this, right? 
this is stuff that you need for an interview. Read all this for an interview. You know, I'm glad I know where it's at. Because they're always going to ask you what's the latest or what is the, like, the most memorable hack. And internal, Eternal Blue is the one I go to. Because it's the most interesting one to me. And actually, when you use Meta School, and actually, I guess in this book, we're going to use, we're going to do an Eternal Blue um, vulnerability hack with Metasploit is what I remember and you're, you're going to be able to um, download or upload that payload um, and uh, take advantage of a Windows 7 or something like that and you have to remember this this is this is what's uh, I would say sad is a lot of people are still using Windows 7 I mean, a lot of companies they don't have they don't have the money to to change or whatever or whatnot, but they might be running some Windows 7, man. They oh my gosh, and they might not have it patched. You know, it might be old. And they might not have their servers patched for Eternal Blue, and you can use the Eternal Blue malware, and you can just go right in their system. You know what I mean? So it's like it's truly remarkable. But that's why you you're gonna learn in here in this book that you can scan. Um, people's um, networks or servers or whatnot, and you can find out what operating system they're using. So if they're using Windows 7, then this 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 book is so cool is going to show you how to go into how to go into certain sites and find out what OS systems or operating systems have have what vulnerabilities, and then you can literally download those from the website and then try to use them against them, somewhere to attack them and hack them to them. And if you get in, then hey, they didn't patch that up, right? And this, that's, that's what hacking is. So this book, I guess the saying, you know, how to be a master hacker, I guess it's right, you know, because, but it's like basic common sense hacking, but it's, like, yeah, I don't know, like the steps you would do. Anyways, okay, so let's read this. Internal Blue, 2017. In the late 2016-17, a shadowy organization appropriately named the Shadow Brokers was trying to sell exploits on the internet that they said had been stolen from the U.S. spy agency, NSA. When they were unable to sell them for the asking price, they released them on the web on April 14, 2017. These exploits were real, stolen exploits from the NSA could effectively effectively give their owner access to nearly any window any Windows 7 and earlier computing systems with systems administration administrator privileges. This exploit hack was known as internal blue and internal romance. Within days, Microsoft released a patch known as MS 17 01 <laughs> zero in the spring of 2017 unfortunately not everyone patched their systems that's what i was just saying and ex and the exploit was responsible for millions of computers being compromised in the next few months including the wanna cry so wanna cry is another big one wanna cry uh pet pet ya and not pet ya ransomware Evidence would seem to indicate that the Shadow Brokers was an operation of Russian espionage agencies and associated bodies. Russians. And then here's WannaCry. WannaCry, you gotta go, you gotta look that one up. I think there's a whole um, documentary just on that incident. I guess WannaCry um, almost took down the whole internet. And I guess some kid, I think it's Wanna Cry, I'm thinking it's the right one. But you can read it, and then it's got hackers arising, you know, if you want to know about stuff. Oh, no, that's SMB stuff. Anyways, Wanna Cry is another one looking to. It's really, really famous. I think some English kid reversed malware, engineered the, and found, engineered the Wanna Cry virus, and then I think it's that one. And, um,. Um, shut it down so anyways here goes legal stuff uh, cybercrime law enforcement these are very important to read too so you know but we're gonna skip them I'm gonna skip all this stuff this is stuff you need to know if you're gonna get a job or something 
Um, and you need you should have common sense when it comes to hacking systems. So you should only hack these systems on your own, you know, little network. Um, you know, it's talking about be careful out there. Many messages to all you simply is be careful out there. Even if you don't have malicious intentions, the knowledge you are about to acquire can be misconstrued with bad intentions. The website blows up while you're scanning it. No one is going to ask your intentions before they throw your ass in prison. <laughs> for some, for someone like myself who has danced on both sides of the law, I can tell you first that when somebody finds out you have Kali or any hacking tools and the knowledge of how to use them, you're suddenly guilty and proven, until proven innocent. But you know what's funny is that. Um, you know we're supposed to be innocent till proven guilty but that's not how the majority of uh, a lot of people in authority work with now there's a lot of good authority right and they do work in the you know guilt, uh, innocent till proven guilty so but there's a lot of stuff that's <laughs> a lot of people on this authority that are that already have you guilty and you need to prove your innocence which is sad right but that's what I'm saying if you don't have a degree in cyber security um, I don't know how you're gonna spend that you're learning how to hack and all that you can just say you're interested in it and you want to work in the sector but for, for me it would be easy I would be like I got a degree in cyber security that's why I have all this labs and hack and stuff set up and I have a degree in it and I'm in the industry so yeah, I, I'll be alright and you'll be alright too so Okay, so this is basically saying um, if you're this and you're okay. The fundamental skills, these are the basic that every hacker should know before trying to hack. Now, this is important. Once you have a good grasp on everything in this section, you can move on to your intermediate le intermediary level. Basic computer skills. Everybody's got basic computer skills nowadays. It's 2022, man. There's kids that can type in the fourth grade, and they have basic computer skills. So we're going to skip that. Networking skills. You need to understand things as DHCP, um, NAT, subnetting, IP4, IP6, public and private IPs, DNS, routers and switches. So the average person is going to know what these are. These are the IP, IPv4 or v6. They're going to know what DNS is. You know, they're going to know what um, uh, MAC addressing is probably. They're not going to know about like the OSI model. They're not going to know about ARP, SMB, SN, SNMP. You know, subnetting and all that stuff. They don't know all that, right? But they're gonna know most of that. That's what's incredible nowadays. Everybody uses computers. But um, <clears throat> go look all that up, and then <clears throat> this book has links. So we're gonna click on this link and see where it sends us. Okay. Look at that. Hackers arise. I guess is what they're gonna be referencing all the time and stop Putin now oh my gosh <laughs> here's onset here's I mean this has got all kinds of stuff if you want to learn uh, I guess it was talking about um, basic hacking skills or something I can't remember I just got distracted by that Put Putin must be stopped now <laughs> so this is gonna give you network basics for hackers okay and a bunch of other stuff hackers arise um I trust this book, so I'm not going to copy and paste this link into the thing. I'm sure it's not loaded with viruses, but it might be. Who I don't know. <laughs> I would just copy and paste that in your browser and then you go in, but instead of clicking on links, but I trust this book, so. Okay, so Linux skills. It is critical to develop Linux skills to become a hacker. Yes. Nearly all the tools we use as hackers are developed by Linux. And Linux gives capabilities that we don't have using Windows or Macs. Yes. 
If you need to improve your Linux skills, you're just getting started with Linux, check out my new Linux series, Beginner for Linux. I'm going to click on that and see what that sends me. Okay, look, hackers arise. Stop now. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why that's so funny because he does need to be stopped now. Okay. What hackers should know? So I guess he's got a website. This Hackers Arise is going to be referenced in a lot of it. And it's got stuff where you can, I mean, you can just go buck wild on that website for days and learn a lot of stuff, probably, you know, on Linux. And then you can come at this book. But just going to just do this book. This book's going to have a lot of examples to use Linux. So Wireshark or TCP dump, you're going you're gonna to use that in the book. I don't know why it says you need to know all this stuff beforehand. Virtualization, yes, you're going to need help setting up your, your virtual network because it, it's very complicated if you have no idea what you're doing. Even if you've used virtual machines before, setting them up and downloading them out is very confusing. And so that's why you need videos like mine or other videos where they show you how to set it up. You'll be all right. You'll get through it. It might take you a little bit, but you know, you'll get through it. Um, security concepts and technologies, Wi Fi technologies. Uh, yeah, you do need to you do need to know how all this works, right? <laughs> Scripting and all that. I mean this is basically it wants you to become this is basically putting the horse before the carriage. I mean, that's how I see it. Or like when you get the, when you apply for those jobs, it says entry level position, sixty thousand dollars to start, six no, fifty to sixty thousand to start. Must have five years of IT experience. I mean, what the? Fuck? <laughs> anyway, you mean to tell me I have to be a hacker before I read this becoming a master hacker book? I don't know. This this is all basic stuff, so just, just really confusing to me. I, I don't understand. But I guess having all this knowledge, some knowledge of it, is okay. But this book's going to give you the knowledge on this, so I don't know what, what this is all for. It just makes me sick. can't stand it. <laughs> I mean, having basic knowledge of it, yes, go do some research on some of this. But, you know, it's gonna, you're going to have to get hands-on experience with it anyways, right? And then it's... Okay, so this is very important too, but I mean, this is your your um, TCP and IP and how it works and how it sends information, right? And this is very important too. Um, um, but memorizing this, if you're hacking, yeah, memorize that. You need to know this because when you're looking at like Wireshark and all that stuff, you'll know what you're looking at, like stuff I, that if you're doing that on a daily basis yes or just do that and know it basic knowledge you need to all know all the basics right is what it's basically saying before you get into all this and you know cryptography reverse engineering think creatively yeah all hackers need to have all this okay let's just hurry up and get to the <clears throat> end map wire shark this is all stuff they're gonna have us using here so I don't understand why though Hell, you need to know all this before. Eater cap, OWASP, zap. Check. Now, this is all tools to hack. Hashcat, TCH, Hydra, Shodan, you know, summary. There's a thousand, man, oh yeah. And there's us hacking with a sweater, with a hoodie on because it's cold or something. That, that stupid. <laughs> He looks like a hacker though, doesn't he? Might as well be wearing a hat that says uh, hack the file or something. I don't know. What's going on? <laughs> okay, the hacker process. Hacking is a process, not a technology or tool. Master OTW. In reality, hacking shares few similarities to hacking portrayed in the movies and television shows. To keep it attractive to mass masses of lay and technically challenged viewers, these shows usually portray hackers with swirling geometric objects and animation on computer screens, 
This is a matter of seconds. The hacker has access to the computer resources. In real life, hacking can be a long, tedious process. Sometimes it can take days, even months, weeks. There are cases in the annals of hacking, for instance, the Carbonac hack, where the attacker patiently worked for 6 to 12 months before compromising a highly valuable system such as bank or national security. Successful hackers spend a great deal of their time doing reconnaissance on systems, the network and the users. There was a time when hackers could use a single exploit to enter just about any Windows systems. And occasionally a similar exploit still appears in the modern era, such as Eternal Blue. We'll be working on with Eternal Blue through this book. As systems have become more and more secure, exploits have become more and more specialized. For instance, you need to know the following to successfully exploit a system. The operating system, now this is important, that's what I was talking about. You need to know the operating system, if it's using Windows or Mac, and what version of Windows, what version of Mac, I guess. I don't know, I've never hacked into a Mac before. Man, my eyes itching. The service pack of the, the service pack of the operating systems what ports are open on the target systems and you're going to use like nmap or some scanning tools to see what ports are open now you don't know what ports are you're going to know what ports are in a minute what services are running on the target on the target system right you need to know what services are running to exploit what applications are running on the target system and what language is used on the target system sometimes even more information is necessary this special this specificity, this specificity is why reconnaissance is so critical. You need to determine all the information before beginning the game. In some cases, reconnaissance may take 90% of the time of the entire operation. That's right. Reconnaissance is not as sexy as popping a shell on a target system, but, is, but it is supremely critical in this area. If your reconnaissance is adequate, all of your efforts will likely go for naught. Although hacking is not a cookbook activity, a great hacker is creative and analytical. See Hacker Essentials for Chapter 2. We can generalize and say that you should take the following steps in your hacking process. Fingerprinting. Fingerprinting is a process of enumerating the following attributes of a target. So what I would recommend is get a book, go to the dollar store, and go get um, uh, uh, just one of those diary, those dollar diaries. Get a marker and put reconnaissance hacking. Put that on the put that on the cover, or whatever, or whatever you know you can write on the front, right? Open that book put down step one in reconnaissance right and then put fingerprinting um, step two passive reconnaissance but and then write it however you understand it right so um, you don't have to put fingerprinting but I would you know put fingerprinting and then explain what it is in your mind how you understand it and how you would and how you would um, and what this book recommends, you know, you know, you need the hosts, you need the network topology, you need the operating system, you need the services. And in this book, it's going to show you. So what you can do is you can put like, for instance, network topology, right? Put network topology line and then under it, you can put the tools to use or resources to use on how to get somebody's network topology. And that can be basically, um, I know there's a couple of... Uh, websites or tools or something like that where you can get the network topology of somewhere you know by entering their DNS or something like that their IP address so put that leave some room and then you'll be able to go through the book and go back and put how to do it and then that, that way you have a, a man your own hack manual it's like what was that website like right now I can't remember so I would go back to my hack manual and go that's right but I actually have all mine on my on my laptop, my hacking laptop. So I go on there and I've got it all listed. So if I remember a bit piece of it, I search for it and it comes out 
I have everything on there on, on my on my favorites so all right this video is gonna end real quick and then um, I'm gonna pick up because we're not done so I'm gonna pick up here in a second all right pick back up um, so passive reconnaissance is the process of learning about the target without ever directly interacting with it in other words you can gain information about the target from a third-party search such as DNS Shodan Netcraft Google social networking sites and others the key to passive reconnaissance is to gather as much information about the target as you can without ever enter ever interacting with it and alerting the target of your interests all the information comes from sources that have been gathered from information previously as we do this then harvest the information in some circles these techniques are known as open source intelligence or OSINT more about OSINT you can go to that hacker so what you guys can do is you can like pause it zoom in on that and you can go to those websites too on this book right Finding information about these targets can be critical to the effective and efficient password cracking. Active reconnaissance. Active reconnaissance, as you probably already guessed, is information gathered while actively interacting with the target. Active reconnaissance is risky but usually provides the attacker with more reliable, accurate information. Very often, this is through port scanning with tools such as Nmap, HPing3, or banner grabbing. Much more specific information can be gathered in the active reconnaissance phase, but it's risk detection by the target, as every packet and probe has the signature of the sender. This phase of reconnaissance also risks triggering security devices such as firewalls and choosing detection systems. <clears throat> Password cracking. Password cracking is a specialty that, when successful, can render significant rewards to the practitioner. In 2019, most systems are still protected by single passwords and not two-factor authentication that would make them much safer. If you, can, if you can crack the password, you gain all the user's permissions and rights. <clears throat> Here's some examples of, you know, most common passwords. Okay, so this is cool. If someone on the network is using one of these common passwords, or the 5,000 other most common passwords, the attacker can crack it in seconds. So you see this <laughs> password one. Um, that's that's a good one. Uh, you see this one? Q W E R T Y one two three. Okay, that's literally somebody goes on the top row and just does Q W E R T one two three right in a row so they remember it. So in a lot of places. That I've worked, they use some form of that, just or from one Q A Z or you know, and and that's not good, but that's what they do, because it's easy to remember and they think it's you know it, it kind of defeats the purpose of a password, but I mean, um, <laughs> I don't know if it's not connected to the network, then you might be okay, but there's other ways somebody can come in and run a script or something they've made I don't know anyways um, so this is this is going over like what you do covering your tracks so now that we have an idea of the process of hacking or exploitation let's get started all right that's my I like to hear that this is getting it's gonna get exciting well there, there we are again with our sweater it's cold in this room okay so it's winter and it's cold, so he has to have his hoodie on. He's not trying to look like a hacker, okay? But that's just the way it is. <laughs> okay, I think I'm funny, but that's, that's probably not funny. <laughs> okay, now that we have completed all the preliminaries, let's get started. Man, that was a lot of preliminaries. <sighs> yeah. Okay, start hacking. Before we launch into our journey into becoming a master hacker, we must first build a safe lab. I already built a safe lab, but um, I don't know why that's not showing. 
Um, but you can build a, a safe lab from this, so you can follow this stuff. And um, um, you know, set your own environment up. So that's just gonna show, I guess, I what that shows, just the network. Um, if you go through this, <clears throat> I don't know if this has links to do all this or instructions. I'm sure it does. You know, Kali Linux. We've gone over what Kali Linux is. If you're just watching this video for the first time, um, go back to my other videos and look up uh, how to download Kali Linux. Um, I guess this does show you how to download it, right? I strongly, I strongly recommend that you use Kali for this book. Although you can use other Linux distributions, we're going to be using Kali, it says. You can download Kali at www.kali.org. And it doesn't let you click on that. It's not a link. But you can just put that in your um, browser, www.cali.org. And then it gives you, I guess, you know, from the home page, click downloads. So it gives you a, a guidance on how to do it. It might not be exactly, but I'm not going to do it because I already have one. I've already got my Kali machine downloaded, and that's all they're going to use in here. Um, you know, what you can do is pause it and you know you know do do as much as you can see on that i don't know because i'm not going to do it i already have one um you might have to google how to set up a cali you know vmware cali linux uh, machine so um i've already got one so i'm not going to do it i'm going to skip all that now this is showing about virtual box virtual box is just another virtual machine okay and I hate VirtualBox. I mean, it's free, but it I don't like it. I mean, my, my Kelly machine works just fine. But like setting up a your own network, it, it's got a lot of problems in it, man. And I'm doing a lot of troubleshooting trying to get, especially, you know, uh, never mind. But I'm, just, I'm doing a lot of troubleshooting just to get the network running, you know. So just whack. I'm going to make another video on that. That's... That's my other book series. Um, so this is showing you how to do virtual box, which you can. People probably love it. I don't know. I don't know why these are black. But um, I can't stand virtual box. It sucks. Um, okay, we're gonna. So this guy is creating his virtual environment. <clears throat> so you can do some hacking what I am going to do is I'm probably going to do so I don't have my VMware um, other stuff to exploit I only have my Kali toolbox so I don't have I mean my Kali Linux I'm sorry I don't have like Metasploitable and all that servers on it so I will be doing that Let's keep going. Setting up Cali graphic install. So just Google that. Go to I mean go to YouTube and say how do I I would use VMware or buy the book and follow that. You know how do I um, or go to my other videos where I'm doing that. Um, how do I set up a virtual environment using VMware? How do I get a VMware workstation? How do I get a VMware, um, whatever it is called? You know, how do I get Kali Linux on my VMware? You know, and all that. You're gonna have to download VMware first, and then you gotta get the Kali Linux ISO. I'm um, ISO it, which is it ISO image? Yeah, probably. Anyways, so we're gonna skip all that. I'm telling you, this is just getting me. I'm just annoyed. I don't understand why those are black. Is it my app not able to show that, or what's, what's happening here? All right. Man, that's a lot of instructions on how to... And see, that's why sometimes these books... 
And that's what it's supposed to look like when you have it. And that's what my okay. Okay, this is important. This is what we'll do. Okay, so throughout this book, we'll focus on target systems, Metasploitable 2, and purposely vulnerable Linux systems and Windows 7 to download and install Metasploitable to click. Okay, so we'll do this, but we're going to do this another day on another video. I'm going to go back to this because this is not what this video is about. This video is going to be about um, Google, Google hacking. Okay, this is not a... So I'm going to come back and we're going to set this up later. Okay, we're not going to do that now. Because he's making a Windows 7 machine because he wants to do internal blue, remember? They want to do internal blue and use that. And I've done this and that was a Windows 7 vulnerability. So I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to set that up later. I don't want to do all that right now. I want to do something a little bit more interesting. Because uh, I don't feel like doing all that right now. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, passive reconnaissance. Listen closely and intently to your enemy. They will tell you everything you need to know to defeat them. Master OTW. That's a good one. Many on this task to become a master hacker t t uh, tend to discount the need to do any information gathering or reconnaissance. These newbies, I don't use the term of disparagement, I don't use that, that term as disparagement, but as a descriptor, we all begin as newbies. I mean, we said newbies, BGs, all that stuff. <laughs> Want to rush into attacking a target system. Reminds me of a joke that I saw on Colors <laughs> about the two bulls on top of the hill. <laughs> Google that one too. The master hacker understands that the more they know about the target, the better they're going to be. And that's, that's for damn show. Chances of success, as I mentioned earlier in chapter three on the hacker pro process, consciousness may take up to 90% of the entire time, and in some cases may take months. In this chapter, we'll focus on gathering information about a target from publicity, from publicly available resources. These techniques are often termed passive reconnaissance because the hacker gathers information without interacting with the target. Some people also refer to this as open source intelligence or OSINT and all the information comes from third party sources who have already gathered information about the target for us. This is the most interesting part. The, the information you gather in this stage depends on the target target is a website you want to know how much the technology is behind the website there is as possible if the target is a domain you want to know how much about the domain is possible if the target is a person you want to know how much about the person is possible it would be impossible to include all the passive reconnaissance techniques so we will limit ourselves to just a few here <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we are only doing this one Google hacking okay we're not going to do Netcraft today. We're not going to do Shodan, DNS, none of that today. We're going to do that in another video. We're just going to do Google hacking. For additional passive reconnaissance techniques, techniques go to www.hackersarise slash OSINT. So this Hackers Arise, um, I want to start looking at that. I don't know. Hacking Google. As we all know, Google operates the most widely used internet search engine on the planet. Google crawls nearly every web page of every website and builds a massive database for all information, information it gathers. Most people then use Google's database to search keywords for articles relevant to the subject of their inquiry. Google then retrieves the most relevant websites based on its algorithm. The page rank algorithm named for Larry Page, one of Google's founders, went priority which priorities prioritizes the articles. What few, what few know is that Google has particular keywords and operators that can assist you in exact, precise information from this extraordinary database. As a hacker, that, that Google database may, may yield information about potential targets that could prove invulnerable, invaluable, and vulnerable. <laughs> Include passwords, including passwords. Let's take a look at a few of those keywords and what they do. Okay, this is this is the gold of it. 
Google hacking keywords. Please note that Google's keywords require a colon <clears throat> between the keyword and the search terms, such as in, in title colon hackers arise. Although far from exhaustive lists, here are some more widely used Google keywords. Um, a line anchor. What? A line anchor. So what I would do is I would get your little book and then another page and write down Google hacking keywords. Underline it and I would and I would put these down because this is good you're gonna forget. And you can't really Google I mean you can Google 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 hacking keywords and they'll pop up, right? But why when you could just write them down and have your own little book right there? You're gonna be on the field. I, I don't know. It's just Write it down. Have your own little, little cool little manual, man. That's it. Um, <laughs> if you use a, a line anchor keyword, Google restricts your search to those web pages that have all the terms you're looking for in the anchor of the page. Align text. If you use the align text e keyword, Google restricts your searches to those pages that have all the search terms you specify in the align text page. Align title. Align text and then put a little description of what it does. If you use the align title keyword, Google restricts your searches to those pages that have all the search terms you specify in the title of the page. Align URL. If you use the align URL keyword, your Google restricts your search to those pages that all that have all the search terms you specify in your URL on the page. Uh, file type. If you use the file type keyword, Google restricts your searches to those pages that have the file type you specify. For instance, the search for Adobe PDF file, you could use file type colon PDF. <clears throat> if you use the anchor key, Google restricts your search to those. Okay, so you already know all this, right? If you use the in-text key, so I would get in there and write in-text. Just say, I would say, in your book, I would say in-text. And then I would put a line under it and I'd put in text colon and then um, parentheses I would put um, text keyword and then so then you know how to use it so it would be in text semicolon keyword um, um, in text keyword text or something right and then put on there Google restricts your search to those pages or however you understand your own writing. So I would put that and then I'd put um, specify text in the page. So then you know how to use it, right? You know how to, so what you're doing is, okay, let me, let me just, so you understand this is you're putting in text, okay, as, as the keyword, right? To do an advanced search in your Google, in, in Google. And we're going to show you right now how this works. And then you're going to put the word colon and then the word. So it's only going to look for in all the texts of web pages or whatever. It's going to look for that specific word only. <clears throat> right? And, you know, in title, it's going to look in the title of the page what you specifically are looking for. So if you're looking for a company, you're going to say, in title colon um, evil court right and in any title of any web page that comes up evil court is going to show those so I mean this is this is this is really if you're looking for something specific it's going to find it and it's not your average search that everybody else could they can put evil court it's going to come out something different come on the, the show evil court and it's probably going to come up that show anyways uh, um, uh, mr. robot and all that stuff anyways but um, so that's what I would put in your little book, right? Or if you don't, you know, if you don't have a little book. Remember, that's how it works. Okay. Google happy hacking examples. Let's look at some examples how we can hack Google hack to find um, relevant websites and files. So this is very very cool stuff right here. As you know, many firm. Okay, many firms store important information and other information in Excel files. We could use a simple Google hack that looks for Excel file types. So Excel file types are like .xls or .xlsx. Okay. 
So how would you do that? You would write file type colon um, XLS, and it's gonna look for Excel files through the whole um, database that Google has of, of their um, of all their logged websites, right on the web. So uh, let me back up a little bit. So strike that, reverse it. Um, if you watch, if you watch um, Hulk and Catch Fire on AMC, that's a great show for information on how all that stuff works. Because I mean, it's just a show, but it's it's accurate on how how it works, right? And it shows you, it's like a show about the '80s that show you how all that works, how the website, how web pages work, and how some companies at the start like. Netscape and all that were were what they were doing is what they were like Google basically is a database of websites that when you search you use algorithms to find what you're looking for right but how they first did websites was they they um, categorized them and then they put them in like a um, like you, they sent you would link to them so or whatever so like if you were interested in in, in like dog walking um, they would provide you like a like a little search um, site or whatever, a little search page, and you can click on a link that would be dog walking. There would be probably be like a hundred dog walking sites, and they would actually um, call people and say, "Hey, you got a website?" And they, "Yeah, I do about dog walking," and they would put it on their web page, right? So they didn't have, so they had a, they didn't have really a database. Well, they did kind of, but it was more like, um, you know, you click on something and you, and then it puts you to that direct site, right? But then Google, actually Yahoo, came up with the first um, Google. They came up with the Yahoo search bar, and that searched all their databases and and stuff, and and the search the database to find the specific thing you're actually looking for. So. <laughs> I mean, this is how it works, okay? And so you gotta watch that show. That it actually explains it. Really great show, anyways. You know, if you're into cybersecurity, halt to catch fire on AMC. You should watch that, man. It's a great show. Um. Anyways, so that's what this is doing. It's um, it's looking through Google's database for specific files that companies might have on the website, and that's bad, okay? So we're gonna follow that. We're gonna do this. We're going to do this. So file type XLS. That's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to I'm going to Google. I think that's Google. Let's go right here, Google. So Google. Google right here. Google search. All right. Let's do some Google right here. It's not my default browser. So what was it again? File type. File type. I can't type for crap. My typing is whack. File type. XLS. Right? X. S. Okay. Okay. Okay, now let's go back and see what I did wrong. File type XLS. Search to those pages. When you use link keywords followed by URL, Google shows you all the sites that are linked back to specific URL. If you use the site keyword, Google restricts your search to the site domain. Google hacking examples. Let's look at some examples on how we can use Google hacking to find relevant websites and file pages. As you know, many firms store important financial. What the heck? Did I go back? I did. Okay, file type. So this is what it's supposed to look like that came out. What what happened to me? I stole the ball.
Hmm. I'll take. Okay, let's go. Um... Oh, wait a minute. Let's just search right here and see what happens. Being, but it's still showing me stuff. I'm gonna compare those. Oh, I don't know. Let's go to Google search. I'm gonna see what we're doing wrong. <clears throat> page and see if it let's do this one file type xls site gov URL contact let's do that one in URL contact man I can't even see that was that a dot dot gov all right I'm going to move this over and I'm going to copy this. I want to see what. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that one out because that's not Google. All right, let's see what happens. XLS site uh, colon. So I'm learning too. I haven't done this in a long time. Dot. So dot. Gov. In a URL. Colon. Colon. Contact. See what comes out. Um. All right, we got something. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna explain what we just did. So we looked up. We wanted. We were saying that we want a specific file type, which is XLS, which is Excel, right? So we want all the Excel files, and then we did another colon, and we want X X files that have an extension dot. Uh, not extension well, yeah dot gov um, in, in the URL we want in the URL we want the contact right so we're we're saying specifically what kind of files we want that um, government I guess is putting on the website for people to see or for their employees to see 
I don't know, but all this information came out, right? And I'm not going to click on most of this stuff because you can get in trouble, right? Um, all right, so if you look at this... Um, this is giving me a lot of Excel sheets for like government agencies, right? <clears throat> and this is all legal information that they have out there, but it's usually for their employees. But like this statewide school contact list, I'm sure isn't bad, but see how it comes in Excel sheet? And it's got, you know, Bourbon County and all your counties and who's in charge of it, Mike, Ford. And here's his contact information to get a hold of him. And this is all public information, right? But it's specifically looking for Excel sheets. And some of this stuff you don't want to click on. You don't want to look at because some of this could be that some government sites have it on here and they don't even know. Like... Like, uh, let me show you an example. I'm not going to click on it, but I want to show you an example that I wouldn't click on. Like, all active and inactive at winsurance.gov. Um, I don't think they want that information out there of who's active and inactive. And I'm sure it's going to have a contact list because that's what we're looking for, the contact list. So in the URL, if it says contact, you know, and the URL means this. So if you look here, this is the URL, HTTPS manuals.gov. And then if you go more, it says resources. It'll say contact list. Let me look at this one. What are we looking at? Inactive, inactive. <sighs> Over here. Portals, self. And if you look at this, it'll probably say slash um contact list or contact so <clears throat> i'm not going to click on that one because i'm sure they don't want i mean if they do want that on there i mean i'm sure it's an accident or you know but the, the whole point is, is if you're doing reconnaissance let's say you're doing reconnaissance on this company then they're paying you to do some hacking for them ethical hacking or whatever ethical <laughs> um this is what you're going to do and you're going to click on it and you're going to have all their information and then you're going to make a report on it and you're going to say do you actually want that uh, uh, accessible on Google sure it's fine I don't think so I don't think you want anybody to access who is active and inactive in your company um, and their contact information and their names and their numbers because it all goes back to social engineering, right? Let's say, or whatever. Let's say, let's say that company hired me, right? And let's say I go to this all active and inactive Excel sheet, and I have everything on them. It's gonna have their contact information. It might be outdated, but let's say if I go, and it might even have the the, the date they went inactive. That's even weirder, strange. Um. Let's say I went and I did some more research using Google and I found out that one of the guys on that inactive sheet, he's not active anymore, was a big guy, was a big time guy and everybody knew him or whatnot. You know, I look on LinkedIn and I get all this information. I'm like, this is the guy I'm going to pretend to be. I have his wife's name. I have the, the receptionist's name. I find out that they're friends. Maybe, you know, pretend I have a cold. Hey, uh, this is my, how you doing? How's everything doing? You know, because I've been stalking them on Facebook. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of genius things you can do, or ingenious. It doesn't even genius, it's just your brain, man. Think with your brain. You know, hey, Carol, this is uh, Mike. At Mike, how's it going? I got a cold. Oh, hey, Mike. Yeah, my wife is, you know, telling me, you know, because you know the story, because you've been watching their Facebook. That's why you got to. Lock your Facebook. I'm going to have to lock mine. <laughs> um, I can do anything. I don't even have to do all that. I could just be like, hey, this is, you know, this is Jack. You know, maybe I get a video of how he sounds. Maybe I try to copy his voice. You don't know what I'm going to do. 
and I could do it all from this information. And they say, hey, Jack, nice to hear from you again. Where you been? You know, found out his hobbies and stuff. Well, I've been fishing and stuff. Oh, just like you, Jack, ma'am. <laughs> the sky is the limit, right? And they're not tracing your phone calls. This is, this is something social engineering, right? It's terrible. And bottom line is you don't want this information on the on the on Google. You, you, you want to report this to your people you're working with. See, we need to take this off. This is what I found. This is ridiculous. And they go in there and they can take it off. And then you, they won't be able to access it, right? And that's what you're doing. Now, I'm sure this company, it says insurance.gov. So, deals with people's uh, insurance, right? I don't know. Well, anyways, that's the power of this Google search um if somebody wanted to be really malicious it's all over with okay let me see if i can why is that doing that uh oh because i'm putting the wrong one in there <laughs> all right let's go back to this um let's see what this book has to say about that we can get a bit more selective and combine Google keywords to look for Excel files and government websites by using the keyword site with the top level domain .gov that have the word contact in their URL. This yields web pages that have contact lists from government agencies, possibly treasure trove of social engineering. Just like what I just said. Isn't that cool? I was actually right about something for once in my damn life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this one's the next one. File type Excel site .gov URL contact. That is what we did. Didn't we? I don't know. If I were looking for an Excel file with email addresses, I might use the following: file type in email. Let's do that one. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one to see what email. And I'm not gonna sh I'm not gonna click on stuff, right? I'm probably gonna. I'm just gonna um, see what comes out, right? Because I'm not gonna click on stuff. I just wanna see what comes out, and then just we can make guesses. Because I don't want you guys to get. I don't want to get in trouble and I don't want you guys to be accessories. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Alright, so then we'll go here. It says, let me see what it wants me to type. I'm just going to erase all this right here to XLS. And I want to see what um, XLS um, in URL. So remember, in URL, then this, colon. So the file type is going to be XLS, which is we know Excel. The dot .xls is the is the extension that you see on the back of that. that you know it's a, a Excel file. So we're looking for an Excel file, and in the URL we want it to say email, right? Right? Um, and dot. So an email that is a uh, excel file so it looks like to me we we'll hit that and see what happens and this is just going to be this is not the government right this is just um what does that say that's weird okay so now it's okay so the first one is unitedfoodbank.org and this is going to i mean this stuff some of the stuff you can't click on it's not bad right executive emails see you see this this is just wrong so executive email I don't think they want that out there they don't want the executives emails out there do they I mean a lot of places put it on websites but not executive emails I don't know you know email tech support guy you know that's that, that's probably okay so you can probably click on this one. Oh heck no that's a download uh oh I want to erase that. Dang it. We don't want to do that. I done messed up. So. <laughs> I didn't know that was a. Man. That's probably a virus. I'm going to have to do a scan now. Or something. See if what that was I downloaded. That sucks. Yes, yeah, so you got to be careful. <sighs> Anyways. What do they know? That's interesting. So this might download all this might just all be downloads or something. Let me see what this says. Showing results of in your own. That's gonna be right. 
enters. Payment with formulas, Department of Agriculture and Markets. I don't know if they want that on there. Kids, King's College Championship PTS, Chef List, Sales Tax Resale Certificates. You know, you could be specific and put the specific company you're hacking in there. See what they got online, man. It's just so ridiculous. It's not even funny. Let me go back to here and see what this says because I'm kind of confused. If I were looking for an Excel file with with email addresses, okay. Why did that download then? Man, let's make sure I'm not gonna delete that. <laughs> Many PHP applications are vulnerable to SQL injections and other attacks. We can look for okay, so SQL injections are database. We can look for these types of web applications with a URL index PHP ID. Some other Google hacks that might yield interesting results include entitle site administration. Please log in. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna do that one and see what happens. I mean, this is what is so fun about this uh, stuff is. I'm not gonna click on stuff because I didn't learn dirty. Look at this guy. He's still making fun of me for doing that. So I'm not gonna do that again. But let's see what else we, you know. And then like the more you practice and you can mess around with this and stuff. Um, I wouldn't be clicking on too many things and looking at people's stuff. So, but you can see if stuff come out, or maybe you can um just mess around with this and stuff. If you're you know in the field and stuff, this is what you're uh what are you doing? Doing ethical hacking and stuff like that. Ethical index. And then we can see what happens. The tidings.org information is class class certification with one S. That might be a hacker. Untitled SQL header publish. Hmm. Login CA cert.org. Google Dorks. So I guess it's a, how to apply for graduate school. Login about first train. Alright, let's see what this says again. <clears throat> Yeah, this app sucks. Some other Google hacks might be interesting. We are pursuing social engineering tech. Okay, if I were pers okay, in in title site administration, please log in. That's the one I wanted to do. Took the wrong one. If I were pursuing a social engineering tech, and I want to gather useful information on my target, I might use the title curriculum vitae file type doc. I mean, and that's going to do that. Oh, why? Effective finding and secure webcams is one of the most aspects of Google Hacks. Oh, this one's cool. Effectively finding unsecure webcams is one of the most fun aspects of Google Hacks. The following list shows of these of these effective hacks for finding vulnerable webcasts. Now this is fun. So I'm gonna try one of these, okay? So and we're gonna hack into um <clears throat> like a webcam, right? That they have on there. It's not really hacking into it. It's 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 on there. Uh
Let's see. I don't know which one worked. Um, but did it work? Come on. Easy can actually okay so let's look at this one. Oh yeah yeah so this is the one that I remember looking at so you can actually it's not secure though this, I would recommend clicking off these they're not secure uh anyways but this one you can actually move the camera let's get that one off so let's get out of here these are just cameras that comp or companies or that you can look at. What the hell is that? It's a camera of a front gate. And what we're doing is we're their their cameras are available available online. Uh, what's the one that I I liked? Um, I tried all these at one time. So that's somebody's camera, I guess, whatever. You can look at network camera. I guess it's blacked out, but that's pretty fun. And let's try in title. So in in the title we want to look for um I'm just gonna do it without the capital network uh, camera uh, network oh no crap. I'm done. I'm doing the same damn one. In title. Uh, Evo. Cam. URL. Pop that cam. Win. Yeah. You might see nudity. You might see nudity. Uh oh. Oh yeah, I don't know if I want to click on any of these. <laughs> Bird cam. I'm gonna have to just. That didn't work. X, 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 yep. <laughs> Alright, we don't, we don't want to click on any of those. But, geez, that looks like that's not a good one. Evo cam, maybe I spelled it wrong. Anyways, you get the drift of all that. So, I'm going to get out of that one. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want to deal with all that right now. Alright, so there's just some cams that you can look at, and you can... Just some examples, right? You can look up any other... That's what I'm saying, you gotta be careful. Why is this not talking about exploit database? That's ridiculous. Okay, exploit database. Um, that's gonna be on the next video. Yeah, Google Hacking Database. Okay, Google Dorks is an enumerable is enumerable blah, blah blah. Google Dorks are innumerable, and some people, such as Johnny Long, specialize in developing effective Google Dorks. Long has written Long has written a couple of good books on the subject. Another good source, good source of Google Dorks is the exploit database 
exploitdb.com. If you go there, click on the GHDB tab to the left of the screen, you can find the latest Google Dorks. Let's do that. The GHDB tab. Let's do that. That seems fun. So we're going to go to database. Okay, GHDB. Google Hacking Database. <clears throat> and we're going to go back to. I'm going to leave that up. We're going to go back to this. Okay. That's what it's going to look like. That's what it does look like. We have. We. Okay, we got five more minutes. Here we have. We can find thousands of Google Dorks. Some are more effective than others. We can be very specific about what kind of Google Dorks we're seeking. For instance, we are targeting WordPress websites. We can enter the keyword WordPress. The search window on this would display all the Google Dorks relevant to WordPress. Most popular content management systems is website, building for websites. Among many Google Dorks here, we find more complex than combined several phrases. File type SQL and text password. Pa oh man, so this guy's looking for database passwords. In the text, username insert into users and values. This guy's looking to hack some crap. And there you go. Boom. And so what this does is Google Dorks is going to show you <clears throat> like these are examples and um, vulnerabilities, right? That people are putting out on Google. When we use this dork, we find several websites. When we click on one, we find the following. As you can see, we were able to find an SQL script that inserted users and passwords into the database. As we can scan through the script, we find numerous usernames and passwords and pairs. These should make hacking these accounts pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do the summary on this and we're done. So, and then we're going to look at the website. Okay, Google, and the summary is Google hacking is a key skill that every hacker should be aware of and of and master. In many cases, it can yield information on your target that may save with you hours, or even days, exploiting the target. As we continue to expand on information gathering techniques, keep in mind you're unlikely to use them all. These techniques on one project, <coughs> all these techniques on one project. Each project is unique, and we need to customize your information gathering techniques on the target. It's also important to note that they're they're publicly okay. It also it is also important to note that we are using publicly available information that does not require a touch the domain or website of potential targets, and thereby triggering some alert by intrusion detection IDS systems or other security devices we're gathering information. In this chapter, I'll introduce you more to techniques to gathering information. Okay, um, that all said and good, you still want to be careful because what's, what, what you're doing is you're looking up vulnerabilities, right? So you're looking up information that's legal, but not necessarily on purpose maybe, right? You might stumble across something that a company doesn't know that they have on there, right? Because there's human fall and human error. And then you're looking at potentially something that could damage a company. So you got to be careful. This stuff is not something to play with. You may think it is, but it's not something to play with because you can get a lot of information for social engineering. You can get past, like I said, passwords and stuff. But we're going to go to look at Google Dorks. Okay. And um, I probably got maybe five more minutes on this, but we're just going to look at it real quick. Um, let's just not see. Tell me how many minutes I have left. Okay, so we got a little bit of seconds. I mean minutes. So let's go back here and let's. Dad, you want us to put the fries back into the freezer? Um, no. Okay, so now we'll look at Google Hacking Database. I'm gonna click on one of these. See what happens. So this. Somebody found a vulnerability, or not a vulnerability, what is this? Okay, Google Dork's description, index.sql does Google Dork index external files containing juicy info, and it was discovered recently on the 19th of September. Exploiting, okay. Penetration testing with Kali Linux, it's showing you training, you can use OSCP certification, Kali Linux. So this contains juicy info. I don't, files containing juicy info. I have no idea. 
But if you copy this, right? Copy. And then paste. Index of SQL imported files, right? I'm not clicking on any of this stuff because I really don't. Um, If you want to be more specific, specific, you can put in URL and then the, the company you're hacking, right? If you're hacking with their permission. Um, I think what Google Dorks also gives you is, um, you know, ideas on how to use that right here in your training. Advanced web exploitations, and it shows you how to use that information that you grab. So this is really cool. Um, let me go back, go back, go back. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? Windows Server. You can even type in here a quick search. Um, this is all just with Google. So see how I have this saved? I've already got this on here, so I just come in. I I can do whatever look for whatever I want but I don't have any reason to be doing this because I don't work for a company where I'm hacking anybody or doing reconnaissance or attacking anybody right now you know what I'm saying but that doesn't mean I won't in the future but um that's too well dump right here look so um there's your little google dorks I mean uh, Google hacking and what it basically boils down to is um, companies or websites let's just say websites because anybody can have a website right what this does is and then if it's yeah what this does is is that it looks through Google's database which is comprised of websites and URLs and all right different websites and and it uh, it basically if any company has uploaded something to the to the internet or the you know then you can get specific and you can find the information using these you know in text colon um, index of you know or dot SQL whatever there's there's um, Google has it in there where you can find stuff and I'm sure it's advanced search is all it is maybe Google has it for themselves to find things I don't know but um, sometimes you'll come across stuff that they have on there by accident that's the whole point so if you're ethical hacking ethical then you're <laughs> then you're doing stuff like this to to find it to tell the people hey you need to take this off or you need to um, did you know I was able to get all this information and social engineer uh, my way into your building and uh, plant a bomb or whatever, you know what I mean? Shit, <laughs> so, uh, get into your mainframe and, and download your database and all this stuff, you know, it's just terrible. So, that's it. Hope you had fun. And this was a long one, but this one was very important. This is part of reconnaissance. And this is just one little step you're going to do when you're ethical hacking. Ethical and you know it's fun it's very interesting and but you know I would be careful when you're I mean even though this this book anybody can read this book and and uh, play around with it it's very dangerous information okay so um, I would be very careful when you're doing searches and stuff because you're gonna see stuff you might not want to see and and you know like that XX cameras and stuff you know you know I'm gonna check that out when I get off this video. <laughs> so you don't, you don't want to do all that, right? You don't want to do all that stuff. So. But it's very interesting if you're if you're at the back. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next time on Hack the File. Have fun.